Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, FPL Consult here and today we're going to do the Game Week 20 wildcard team. So I know some of you guys are considering the wildcard and others are maybe thinking maybe it's too early. Right? Currently for myself, I'm not looking at wildcarding because I think my team can be, um, you know, the, the problems in my team can be addressed with a couple of changes. Right? But for those of you who have started out Game Week 17 with, um, I guess, a team that you, you probably think wouldn't do that badly but come to Game Week 20, injuries, rotations, etc., um, kind of forced your hand, then I think this, this video could be useful for you, right? So if you guys do enjoy this one, please give it a like and also subscribe as well if you are new around here. So for Game Week 20, if I were to wildcard, this is the team I would go with. So the squad value is 102.5 mil and the formation is a 3-4-3 formation. So we're going to go straight into it and Edison at the back, right, is probably the only defensive city asset that I think um, is secured for minutes. So because of that reason, and we do want a city asset because uh, come game week 20, right, they do have a double, right, as we can see here, Manchester United away and Tottenham at home. And then in game week 23 as well, they have a confirmed double, right, um, in, against Everton and also Arsenal, right? So basically what that tells us is that they are the only team with two confirmed doubles at this point in time as of recording. So because of that, I think it is still important to have that City defensive asset and Edison being the only secured one for minutes, he goes in goal for us, right? Uh, and Trippier, Botman and Shaw make up the back three, right? Before I move on to the bench later on with the other defenders and keepers. So Trippier, Botman and Shaw, the reason why I've gone with Trippier and Botman Right, Trippier, I think, is pretty straightforward. He's probably the best defensive asset to own this season. Right? But for Botman, I think we do have to understand that if we want to build a team that is really strong up front in the midfield and uh, in the forward line as well, right, we will have to have some good enablers. And Botman at 4.4 mil is a good entry into a Newcastle defence who has uh, arguably been the best defence in the Premier League so far. They've kept the most clean sheets. They've conceded the least number of goals as well. So... Uh, you, you do want this 4.4 enabler to be someone that you're okay to start week in, week out because uh, most of your other bench players, as you'll see later on, right, um, uh, some of them, like Bueno and maybe Ben White, you wouldn't want to start every single game week, right? And Botman comes in really nicely as well. So he's in the team, right? And there's Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw, he has come uh, and had a little bit of a re revival after the World Cup, right? Um, he's performed really well, 32 points, right? One goal and also eight bonus points in the span of three game weeks. He's arguably the best defender that has uh, returned from the World Cup. So I think Luke Shaw is pretty much going to be in a lot of people's teams. His ownership is going to increase as well, right? And Manchester United do have a game week 20 double as well as a potential double in 22 as well. So, with that in mind, I think Luke Shaw is a pretty straightforward pick. On the bench, we have uh, Ward as the backup keeper. I still think he's the best backup one. Right? He's still first team, uh, still first choice for Leicester. So, if we do need him to come in, right, he's uh, absolutely an okay pick. Right? And then for the other two defenders on the bench, I've gone with Ben White and Bueno. Bueno simply because he's just really cheap and he starts at 39 Right, for Ben White, it's pretty simple as well because we will want entry into Arsenal, the Arsenal defence uh, and Arsenal do have a potential double game week 21 as well as a confirmed double game week 23. So that's why Ben White is there. And as for Mitoma, he's a really good um, entry into this Brighton attack who have been doing pretty well. They've been scoring good, uh, quite a couple of goals as well. And on top of that, I think he's a good replacement for Andreas Pereira because Fulham's run now is uh, going to go on a pretty difficult um, stretch. So because of that, I think Mitoma comes in really nicely at 4.9. It's a good entry into a Brighton team that do have potential doubles coming up. So we could just play him for the double and then bench him for those weeks where Brighton don't have good games. So for now, this is how it's looking like. Let's take a look at the midfield. The next up in midfield, we have Kevin De Bruyne, Martinelli, Rashford and Odegaard. So I've gone for Kevin De Bruyne. If I was wildcarding in game week 20, I think you probably want to go for the most secured um, outfielder other than Erling Haaland. And then Kevin De Bruyne is the one, right? He's key to Man City's attack. And also, right, he's started 16 out of the first 17 games. So I wouldn't go so far as to say he's nailed, but I think he's probably, uh, other than Erling Haaland, the one who has the most secure minutes. Right, and next up, I have Martinelli. I think Martinelli and Odegaard, I'll speak about them together. And that's because Arsenal do have a double in game week 23 that's confirmed. And on top of that, they also have a potential double game week 21. Right, so if I'm wildcarding now, I would want to prepare for that. Right, and we could get some announcements before the game week 20 deadline to give us more insight as to whether they will double or not. But at this point, it's looking pretty likely. And that's why I've gone for Martinelli and Odegaard in this team for now. 
right? Even though they play Tottenham away, I still think that in the long run, these are assets that you want to hold. Martinelli and Odegaard both have been putting up really good numbers. Arsenal's attack has been really consistent as well. Right? And then for Marcus Rashford, he doubles in game week 20 and he's, he's on fire right now. He's performing really, really well, scoring lots of goals and... If he's missing from that Manchester United team, it just feels as if the whole attack is missing a key player, right? And that's how important he is at this point in time. Um, and usually when there's a goal, it looks as if it's probably going to be Rashford who's involved. And on top of that, he could potentially be on penalties as well, right? We did see him take a penalty even though Bruno Fernandes was on the pitch. Now, something else to note as well is that Martial is currently injured, right? So as we'll see later on with the forwards, I haven't gone for Martial. I've just chosen to go for Rashford and Shaw. I think that is enough coverage from Man City, uh, from Manchester United, sorry. I don't think I would go for Bruno Fernandes because what he does to the team, right, the, the amount of money he takes up, right, just changes the shape of the team in a way that I don't think I would like, right? So I wouldn't go so far as to double up on Manchester United defence as well. Right, so for this, uh, for this current Game Week 20 wildcard draft, I'll just be looking at Shaw and Rashford as the only two United assets. So up front, I've gone with Callum Wilson, Erling Haaland and Harry Kane. Now for Callum Wilson, I still want a Newcastle attacker in my team and because I've gone for all the midfielders above that I mentioned and for good reason as well that I want them in the team, I can't go for Almiron. So because of that, Callum Wilson is the next best pick. Right, and in his own right as well, Callum Wilson is a really good attacker to own. He's cl clinical, he gets loads of chances, he's been putting up good numbers before he got injured. Now he's back in the team, right, and, New and Newcastle do have a good run coming up as well. Right, so Callum Wilson makes the, my Game Week 20 draft. Right, and then Erling Haaland, I think it's pretty straightforward. I've slapped the captain's armband on him even. Right, and there is talk of whether we should even triple captain on him. I don't think I'd be doing it myself personally, but uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, put you guys off doing it. Right, but for now, I'm going to captain Erling, Erling Haaland if I was uh, wildcarding with this team. And the last pick would be Harry Kane. Now, Harry Kane has been so consistent this season. Right, 19 returns in 18 games, and that's 15 goals and 4 assists for him. Right, so that's incredible and I think he's been largely overshadowed by Erling Haaland. Right, so if Haaland wasn't in, um, in the Premier League, I think we would be saying that Harry Kane um, is pretty much a perma-captain possibly and even uh, a, a must-have. Right, so at this point, because he has a double in Game Week 20, I think it makes sense to have him as well. Even though it's a tougher fixture, uh, tougher run of fixtures right, with Arsenal at home and Man City away, I still think that he could profit even... Uh, without many chances, I think he's that clinical that he could pull off some returns there. And even in the long run, you still would want him in your team. Right? Because after Game Week 23, Tottenham's picture, fixtures actually pick up. So I would want Harry Kane if I was wildcarding in Game Week 20. So this is how the team is looking like. Um, and just for vice-captaincy, I'll just put it on Kevin De Bruyne also because he has that double. Um, and I think Man City would do pretty well this for, for this double as well. Right, so uh, on to the potential replacements uh, if we get announcements for the double game week 21 games. So I think if Brighton as well as Arsenal double, I think this team um, pretty much doesn't change at all. Right? And the only thing that I would change about this team if we do get announcements that Liverpool double is that I would want to try and include a Liverpool attacker as well. So what I would do if I, uh, I want to try and fit one in right, is I would do Odegaard down to Elmiron. Right, and that gives me a Newcastle attacker, as I mentioned, that I want. And then I can do Callum Wilson up to Darwin Nunes to give me that Liverpool attacker. So currently, that's what I would think um, of doing right, if we do get Double Gaming 21 announcements for Liverpool. Right, but as of recording, there have been no Double Gaming 21 announcements yet. So we will have to wait and see. But at this point, I think this Game Week 20 wildcard team looks pretty good. Right? You do have a good number of Double Game Week players for Game Week 20. Right? You do have six of them. Right, Edison, Shaw, Rashford, De Bruyne, Haaland and Kane. So you have six double gimmick players for 20 and you will have a good number of double gimmick players moving forward as well with good Arsenal coverage, Brighton coverage and potentially if you make those changes for double gimmick 21 uh, to include that Liverpool player Darwin Nunes, right, then even more um, doublers in the future as well. So I think the balance of this team looks pretty good. The squad value is 102.5 as well. So I think most of us should be able to afford it. Right, so uh, hopefully you guys uh, find this video useful as well. Right, so if you do, please give it a like. Subscribe as well if you are new around here. And there will be more content before the Gimmick 20 deadline. So stay tuned for that and I'll catch you guys in another one very soon. Bye-bye.